Okay, so we're going to talk about fifth metatarsal fractures. So the fifth metatarsal is the bone behind the pinky toe, or the bone behind this toe right here. This is our fifth metatarsal. There's a couple different types of fractures that can happen in this bone, and really depending on the fracture itself dictates the treatment. There can be a fracture towards the head, and usually that can be resolved with conservative management. You know, as long as the displacement isn't very severe and angulated, causing more than about you know, 10 to 15 degrees of deviation in, in either plane, usually you can get away without a surgery. Sometimes they do, however, need to be fixed. For the fractures of the head, because the bone is kind of shaped like this, if there's a fracture here, a lot of times I will run a screw through the bone here, or sometimes we can apply a plate to the outside and then screws will go across the bone in that, in that variety. There can also be an oblique fracture. An oblique fracture, oftentimes when displaced enough, can be treated with a plate. A plate will sit on the outside of the bone here, we'll put a screw to stabilize it, and then we'll put screws at the plate site to stabilize it. There's another type of fracture called an avulsion. An avulsion fracture typically occurs because soft tissue structures, whether it's a ligament or a tendon, are stronger than the bone in that particular instance. And what I mean by that is there is a tendon that runs along the side of the foot called the perineal tendon that inserts on this bone, the fifth metatarsal base. When you suffer an inversion or a twisting mechanism to your foot, this tendon will pull and cause this fracture. There's another structure that runs under the bottom of the foot. It's called the lateral band of the plantar fascia that also stays very tight and can lead to this type of an avulsion. Oftentimes, if there's not too much displacement or if this fracture is pretty small, it doesn't need surgery, but if it is displaced, I like to place a bicortical screw that stabilizes the fracture. And oftentimes when I do this type of screw, my angle of the screw is intended to be perpendicular to the fracture. Just the same as this here, perpendicular to the fracture. There's another type of fracture, and we'll change the color because it's a little important. It's called a Jones fracture, and that fracture extends right at this junction. We call this the metaphyseal diaphyseal junction. The diaphysis of the bone is the central or skinnier portion. The metaphysis of the bone is this kind of wider flare that you see here. So that's called the metaphysis. This Jones fracture is super common, especially in athletes. Actually, Kevin Durant had a Jones fracture and he had to have a couple surgeries because of it. And what's important about it is the vascularity or the blood flow to that area isn't great. And so what I usually do for these is I either do an intermedullary screw or I apply a screw from back to front to stabilize that fracture. Or sometimes you can put a plate on the bottom side. I often will grab a little piece of bone from the heel. We call that autograph because it comes from ourselves. It has nice healthy blood cells and it can go into the area. So what I'll do is, if I'm putting that intramedullary screw, I'll make a small little opening on the skin and I'll pack that bone into the fracture site prior to putting the screw in and cause compression there. So I find that with, with that particular method, people do great after it. So if you have a fifth metatarsal fracture, you can see it's not so cut and dry. You need to get an x-ray, you need to see a specialist and determine whether or not surgery is or isn't for you. And sometimes activity level can play a role in whether or not we advise surgery. So if you roll your ankle, get it checked out. Might be a foot fracture.